All right, man. All right, let's talk about Levi Owners work. Yay. All right. Apparently, like I told y'all, he wasn't coming back no time soon. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, Pascal is supposed to be back at practice pretty soon. But, you know, apparently Levi Owners work, progressing in recovery, not progressing in recovery from back injury. So, I knew that, you know, when they put him on the four, when, okay, I'm just going to go through this real quick. Thumbs up the video, share the video, subscribe to the channel, next subscribe button is the bell icon button, hit all notifications, increase your chance of notifications. We go live with our video. Now, okay, I'm going to take you all through the timeline, right? So, so, all right, this is what happened, right? He never played, he didn't play his senior year in, in or his last year. He didn't play. He skipped the last year in uh in uh in uh in the he in college. He he sat out the pandemic year, right? So apparently he had a back injury that I you know I wasn't really aware of. Um that's what I will say. I wasn't aware of the back injury or 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 or, or nothing like that. So uh so apparently he had a he had a back injury. And you know, I'm gonna get to it. So we get to, you know, training camp, he got a back injury, you know. Um, you know, he had a promising first, like this one of his preseason games with the Steelers. It was very promising. Okay. And we're like, yeah, you know, he wreaking some havoc, whatever, you know, he's gonna be our new Sue and all that, like his attitude or whatever. Then you know, he ended up saying he got injured or whatever, and uh, he played some games, but it, it wasn't noticeable at all. Um, it wasn't noticeable at all. So, um, but then, you know, you get to the off season, and, and a lot of times, I don't even think he was on the injury report neither. So, we get to the off season and shit. And the coach, I think the D-line coach's son was like, well, he couldn't even sit down in meetings. That's how bad it was. And he feel, he comes out and says, well, I'm feeling a lot better um, or whatever. And then again, you know, his back injury start flaring up this training camp, right? So uh, Brad Holmes say, you know, you know, we expect him to be ready. Or Dan Campbell said we expect him to be ready by, you know, uh, you know, week one. He's going to be ready. That's what our expectations is. I knew he was lying. Right, then Dan Campbell comes out and say, I mean, then Brad Holmes come out and say, well, we knew he had a back injury, you know, before, you know, we knew he had a back injury come when we drafted him. We, you know, we didn't expect much from him last year, but we did expect him to get on track this year. You know, then after Dan Campbell said, we, well, you know, he was expecting to play week one, then he went on short-term IR. Now the four weeks is up, you know, now they saying, well, now he not progressing. So at the end of the day, dude, you know what this tells me that they know they they messed up and they know they got it was a bad pick. They know they they missed on this pick. Um, back to back years, you draft two your first two drafts in the second round. If you know the history of the Lions, the second round draft picks, it's not it's not pleasant. Mir Abdullah, Ryan Bros, Tease Tabor, you know what I'm saying. You can go on and on and on and on. Titus Young. You know what I'm saying? You can go on and on and on with second round picks. Jelani Tavai. Wasn't Kiki Alan Francis, the other dude from Hawaii back in the day. Wasn't he a second round pick? You know, it, it's, it hadn't been kind to them. You turn around, you take Levon Azorki, who had who coming off a back injury after skipping a whole year of college football, his back already injured. That's a red flag. He should be off your draft board at least. Until you know fifth, sixth round, and you predicate your whole defense around them. Without him, it's no pressure. Then you turn around, you know, you draft the utility player in Josh Pascal. He posed a you know backup and as rookie at the three technique. He had cancer, he had another injury, then he got injured with a sports hernia. So back to back years, you know, you draft guys at the three technique that's supposed to get penetration up the middle of the field. And they they do for nothing, and now you one in three. And the only reason you won three football games last year is because Green fucking Bay, you know, didn't have nothing to play for. 
You know, so you sitting here and you lying to the fans. Okay, you lying to the fans. But eventually the truth is going to come out. He going back on IR again. Don't be surprised if you never see him in a Lions uniform again. Don't be surprised. Don't be surprised if you never see him in a Lions uniform again. Don't. You know what I'm saying? Because this back injury, guys, you know, they, he said he couldn't sit down. The coach said that last offseason. Last, you know, his first, you know, year here, he couldn't sit down. You know what I'm saying? You know? You know, so... You know, but it's crazy. It's crazy. It's crazy. You know, but it is what it is. He said that meter is not moving. Campbell responded when asked if Enerzorki was getting closer to return. Come on, you already knew that. You knew it wasn't gonna move, but you lied to the fans, dude. That's all this all that's all hard knocks was about, bro. That's all hard knocks was about, bro. You, you know, it was the lie to the fans to believe that this shit was turning was turning the corner. Excuse my language. That's all that it was about. This is like Dan Campbell just lied to y'all about Anazorki and said that, you know, he was, you know, he was going to be, you know, healthy. We expect him in week one and, and all that type of stuff. When Dan Campbell came out and admitted that, you know, he wasn't going to be, uh, he had a, we knew about his back injury before we took him, you know, that should have told you everything you need to know. And all they trying to do is sell tickets. That's it. They're not really trying to win. How do you build depth on a football team and you build depth from scratch? Because the previous GM and uh, head coach, Quinn, Quinn Trisha, stripped the team of all his talent from Glover Quinn. Didn't even get a chance. Darius Slade, Quadre Dig. I mean, you can go on and on and on and on. But then you want to rebuild the depth, but you keep drafting injury-prone players at the most critical positions. Then you have glaring holes at quarterback. You got glaring holes at linebacker. And you won't fill them. Think about it. Think about his first. Think about his first draft for a minute. And all of this is just off the top. And I don't feel like I don't want to sound like I'm complaining or nothing like that. So hopefully, I'm not coming off like that, right? But you look at this first draft. You know, Penisa Will. You know, who had a year off of football. Hell of a player. Can't take it away from him. Hell of a player, right? You know, and then. You take in the second round, Anderzorki took a year off. Another Pac-12 guy took a year, another year off, right? With a back injury. Then you turn around the draft, FA Melifano, another guy with a with an injury. Right then and there, you take two guys with not with injuries. You take two guys with injuries off the rip. Hold on, I'm gonna pull up the whole draft class. I know I'm missing somebody. Hold on. Come on. Come on. Two the media potatoes, your draft is injured. On a Zorky. Then two, two, you know, third, the second, third round pick, Malafano injured. You know, um, and Derek Brown is a project player. So you took two guys that that got injured. One, you know, really never made his debut for real. And the honors rookie for real. And Melifano got injured last year and this year. He's just not really coming back. All this shit is is just trying to sell money, sell tickets. I hate to tell you all that. That's all it is. It's to sell tickets. They are not 100% committed to winning football games. They not. 
That's what them begging to be on Hard Knocks was about, was to get people believing in their work. They sold out the Seahawks game. It was standing room only. It was standing room only. And people really went down there. You know? So, I mean, it is what it is. And they're going to have more highs and lows in the season as it go. But at the end of the day, they're going to snatch your heart. Trust me. They're not there yet. And I can't say they, I'm, I'm going to say it, they're not building it the right way. How can you build a team that you build them from scratch? And I agree with the philosophy and free agency. It don't make no sense to go out there and spend a bunch of money. Um, you know, it don't make no sense to go out there and spend a bunch of money in free agency when you're not close. Your foundation of your football team got to be the draft. Then you just, you know, basically you just putting the whipped cream on cherry on top of free agency. Because we know, like, almost like unlike any other sport, NFL free agency, it could be a bust. How many guys Albert Haynes were, Jarius Bird? It was a number of those guys, you know, they got big money and they was big bust in the International Football League. It ain't always what you see is what you get. You can literally fall off at any given time in the National Football League. You know? So, I mean, it is what it is. Um, but they was lying about this situation. Um and they taking a whole bunch of unnecessary risks, bro. These injury prone players. This is when you up and you got a, a, a program, you got a plug and play system. Then you can take those type of the risks. But right now, he's a lost cause. He literally had a fucking back injury that was so severe, it pretty much held him out his rookie year. Coming off a year of where he did not play college football. Let that marinate for a minute. He was injured coming off a year where he took the year off when his body should be healing. And he has not recovered two seasons later. So I'll let you chew on that for a minute. Thumbs up the video. Share the video. Subscribe to the channel. Next subscribe button is the bell icon button. Hit all notifications. Increase your chance to get notifications. We go live with our video. Financially, you want to support the channel. Cash up. Dollar sign. CJ Good 313. Venmo. CJ Good 313. PayPal link in the description. Hit the link tree. Find me on Twitch, Twitter, Instagram, Spotify. Anchor, cash up. Venmo. PayPal. Apple Podcast, you can find me on Spotify, Anchor, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, Cash App, Venmo, PayPal. Check out Detroit Lions Top Players for more videos like this. Appreciate the love and support. One time for the one time. Don't forget to check out my main channel right here on YouTube, Goodfellow TV, for more sports news and entertainment. Peace.